I'm going to read to you a simple phrase. This is not my actual sermon, but I'm going to read to you a little thing. And I think sometimes we, we kind of get a tad bit complacent. Not anybody here, of course. <laughs> but we get a tad bit complacent and we, we stop expecting Jesus to be phenomenal in our lives. Anybody, anybody want to just be honest? Say amen. So I'm going I'm to start out. This is part of my sermon. It's not my real sermon. Hopefully I can get to my real sermon. This is about the triumphal entry. We know about it in Zechariah 9.9. Sometimes we tend to think of it in, um, in uh, you know, it's a nice story and, and we knew it ties in with Easter and different things. But it says, when they drew near, uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 1 says, when they drew near Jerusalem to uh, Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. And he said to them, go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you've entered in, you will find a colt tied, which no one has sat. Loose and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So it says this, it says, why are you doing this? He says to him, verse 3, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. And so they went their way, and they found the colt tied by the door outside in the street, and they loosed it. We just tend to read this story, and it sounds fantastic. It's a great, I mean, it's a prophetic um, uh, fulfillment. But some of those who stood there said to them, why are you doing this, loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded, and they let him go. Hey, that's cool. You're in the Middle East. You've got your colt tied there. I don't think it was for poor people. Somebody had to save up, and that was their work animal. And so colts are, are, donkeys are actually stronger than horses. They say they're stubborn, but they actually, they're very intelligent. I've studied this out. And so watch this. So someone goes up and just takes a go. How would it be out there in the, in the parking lot if somebody pulls up and says, hey, uh, I'm taking your car keys. The Lord has need of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem, no problem. Well, I was in church here today. Um, I just got a revelation. Someone's going to walk up to me, take my car keys and say, the Lord has need of it. And then they drove off. Now, I'm not talking about a Bentley. I'm not talking about a Porsche. I'm not talking about a Rolls Royce. I'm just talking about your Toyota Corolla. Would you just let him take it? Oh, uh, yeah, no problem. Lord has need of it all. Listen, I'm telling you, that's what it, I don't, I'm not saying it's a wealthy man's car, but it wasn't a poor person's car. And so watch what it says here. I'm just trying to show you this so maybe I can get to my sermon. And so, so they, went, they went outside, found the colt tied by the door outside the street, and they loosed it. But some of those stood by. And then verse 6 says, And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded, so they let him go. Now, now listen, I, I should have left my coat in here. I'm going to take your coat, sir, okay? I'll, I mean, I'll give it back. Is this your coat? Okay, I'm not, I'll give it back. I, 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 I promise. And I like this coat, too. And then, what? Okay. And then uh, I'm trying to think if I need any more coats. Now, I want you to picture this, okay? I work with youth a lot. I've showed you that card, what, three or four times? I've alluded to it several times. So I'm allowed to do these kind of things in church. Okay? Now, if you don't have one of those cards, don't do this at home. Okay, so some of those looked and said to him, why are you doing this? And then they spoke to him as Jesus said, verse 6. And then they brought the colt to Jesus, and watch what they did. Jeffrey, I'm going to have you be my colt, okay? And it says they threw their clothes on it, okay? Now, I was raised with horses in Los Angeles, okay? I was raised with horses in Los Angeles, and I don't know how many of you have animals, and if you're an animal lover, animals just don't take to anybody, but I want you to picture this colt that just gets tied there, just gets carried away, and then they throw coats that smell. Now, they didn't use perfume like we do. The kings did. But they had their, their odor, their natural aroma. Are you with me? You got, you got what I'm saying. They got the dust of the earth. They got the, you know, the, the, the daily, daily perspiration. You, you know what I'm saying, right? And then it gets in their clothes. They didn't have a washing machine to go, honey, can you throw that my, my, my robe in the washing machine? Because I'm going to have to go out. No, they, they just went ahead and stuck it on. They might beat it a little bit. They might hang it out to dry. But then he take, they take a multitude of coats. Now, I want you to picture this. This is how powerful the Word of God is. So instead of them going up to this coat, here we go. I'm going to be a friend. They just grab the colt. It's not the owner. They grab the colt, and then they go and they throw coats, it says, right? And cast garments on them. So there's multiple smells on this donkey. And so it says that's never been ridden. You with me? 
I, I want to leave Jeff here, but I'm not going to do that to him. I just want you to see the picture. I want you to see the picture. I'm going to leave these here for right now, okay? And watch it. And this is just, I'm telling you, we get so complacent as the holy people of God. And watch what it says. And it says, they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it. And it's a colt, the Bible says, that's never been ridden. Now, I was raised with horses in Los Angeles. We had a, our first horse was a flea-bitten gray, half Arabian, half quarter horse that was a, a green broke. It was a rodeo horse. I know what it's like to ride a rodeo horse, to learn on a rodeo horse. Every now and then that rodeo horse would get a little crazy. And we were the owners. We would walk up to the horse and say, and they would smell, you know what I'm talking about? Any animal lovers in here? They smell you. Oh yeah, you're mine, you're mine. They could tell the difference. But here's a bunch of people's coats on it, and then they stick a man on him. Now, I know it says in Matthew that there was two of them that were let out. But I don't care. The fact that they didn't know them, then they throw coats on them. I'm talking about the daily miracles of walking with Jesus. They threw their coats on him, and then a heavy man sits on him. All right? And then watch this. I'm just trying to show you the depth of the Word of God. And it says... And many spread their clothes on the road. Pardon me. I hope these are clean clothes. So here it is. Here's the colt. colt. And Matthew alludes to that there was two beasts. The mama maybe. And, and then they throw coats on the ground. I'll, I'll shake those out before I give them back to you. Then they throw coats on the ground, which you know donkeys are regularly used to walking carefully on multiple coats. Because this might have been more highfalutin donkey. You with me? No, no, I'm serious. You with me? And so he might have been used to the posh life. Red carpet, you know what I'm saying, paparazzi, all that kind of stuff. So here he's got a man, he's got other people's clothing on him, and then he's got a man on him, and then he's got coats. And he has delicately maneuvered walking on coats before. He hasn't. And then he's walking, and right now we could just be... That would just be a miracle in itself. I mean, he's not, Jesus is not flying. Well, he was Jesus. He was anointed. Listen, man, I've been around a lot of animals, and I've heard of horse whisperers, but if you read into this story, it's even more powerful than this. It says, then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. In verse 8, and many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches. Can you see a colt that has never been ridden and they're waving leafy branches at it and a man's on it and there's smells going on and watch this, it gets even deeper than that. What are we expecting from God? How full are we with our Jesus and we just go through life with the resurrection power on the inside of us? You got me on a good day. And it says this, and they were waving, they cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road, and then they went before him, and those who followed him whispered, because he didn't want to startle. They whispered, they whispered, because they didn't, they didn't want to startle the, the, man, the donkey with the man on it. And they see, and those who followed whispered quietly, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. No, they cried out. So here's a colt who's never been ridden, even it's with its mama, like it says in Matthew. And then here it says, smells of people and the palm branches waving and the palm branches in the road and clothing and he's stepping like this and a man's on him and the smells and they're screaming, crying out, Hosanna! Almost like the start of my service. And you, you, you tell me that beast of burden is just like, yeah, just another day. You know, I was tied up having a great time. And here it is. There's a man on me. I've not been broken yet. I've got coats on me. I've got coats on the ground. And I'm waving there. Are you with me? Do you see how sometimes we just overlook just the simple things of Jesus? I can stop right there, but I can't, can I? Oh, no, I can't. And we know what happens. Jesus goes into the temple, and there's some money changers. They're making a little cash on the side. They're, uh, it's the east, right? And they're making a little cash off of, uh, off of the religious situation. And he says, the zeal of, the, of my house has consumed me. So, you know, Jesus wasn't always a calm, 
Alleluia. Ah. No, and he goes in and he starts throwing over tables. And you know, you can carefully throw over a table, right? No, you can't really. I mean, you really, it's, it's really hard to carefully throw over a table, you know. Now, I could do this, and I think Pastor Bill would probably not have me back at least for a couple of weeks. But, I, you know, he didn't just lightly, guys, listen, my dad's not really happy with what you're doing. And I, I'm really getting a little bit bothered. I'm hot today. I, you know, I was just riding a donkey in, and people were screaming and stuff. And I'm pretty calm. And so, now I'm going to have to ask you to leave, please. <laughs> Because this is really upsetting. No, that's not what it says. He's jerking over tables. And have you ever been somewhere? I, I, I know I'm going to get in trouble with this. I'm sorry. Pastor, I'll be good next time I come back. <laughs> could you see? Now, I'm, this is just, could you see him? He's like throwing things and stuff is floating. Are you with me? Yeah. You can't tell me it was like a quad. Well, isn't this wonderful? Yeah, it's a, it's a Emirati Durham. But do you understand what I'm saying? Our concept sometimes of the word of God is, is different, isn't it? He's throwing over tables, and I'm telling you, I don't quite get how Jesus just can jump into a, a calm situation again. I mean, here he is throwing over tables, and there's money flying, and there's tables flying. You with me? Man, the word of God is awesome, isn't it? And then, when they'd come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And you got to remember, he wasn't a horse trainer. And he, you know, he didn't deal with money like this, so he didn't know how badly he upset the people. He's just, oh, you can't do this in my father's house, right? You know what I'm saying, right? They had to fix the thing afterwards, right? And so then he comes out, and seeing him from far off having a fig tree ha having leaves, he went to it to see if perhaps he could find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was the not the season for figs. So Jesus wasn't a fig farmer. You know what I'm saying? He didn't tend to this. So most likely he just wasn't on top of what was really going on, right? I don't believe so. I don't believe he does anything by accident. I don't think he be, did anything by accident back then. The Bible says he, the worlds were framed through him, right? Everything that was made was made through him. So I don't think anything of this was by accident. I don't think that donkey situation was by accident. I think it was a, a prophetic fulfillment, prophetic fulfillment. But I also believe he was trying to say, listen, people, you need to be looking for miracles every single place you go. I mean, every day your life should be a miracle and because you have the miracle worker living on the inside of you and if the miracle workers were living on the inside of you, things should be happening all the time. I was preaching at Pepperdine University. We, we do a Bible study every two weeks there. One time I was preaching one time and, and I hit the last verse of John, chapter of John, and I, I think I'm going to have to wind this up so that Pastor Bill will have me back potentially. <laughs> and so I was preaching and all of a sudden it hit me and John... At the end of John, and I've got college students, university students, 57th, um, 57th uh, University in America. So there's some nice people there. There's some intellectuals, simply intellectuals. Yes, we're training very hard to be intellectuals. And I said, verse 25, John chapter 21 says, and there are also many other things that Jesus did. I'm talking about, I'm talking about our expectation of what Jesus does in our life. Many other things. We could just end right there and just put a period on there, right? Um, John chapter 21. I know I didn't give you this one. John chapter 21, verse 25. And there are many other things that Jesus did. And we could just end it right there. But God didn't just stop right there because we know this is the holy, the inspired word of God. There are many, also many other things that Jesus did. He could just finish it right there. Which, if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Now, you can't tell me the Holy Spirit didn't just know about the Middle East and about Africa and about Russia or Asia. The Holy Spirit knew about South America and North America and Australia and the islands of the sea and uh, Antarctica and the Arctic. So he was saying, in, and I, I start preaching to these students, I said, do you realize in three years, three and a third years, three and a half years of ministry, so many things that Jesus did that if they were written down, down one by one, 
I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that could be written. Are you with me? The things that happened in 1,200 days, 1,500 days with Jesus, if they were written down one by one, all the miracles and the signs and wonders that happened in three and a third, three and a half, a little over three years of ministry. And I said, you know what, listen, I'm believing God that I'm going to fill up at least one continent worth of things that I'm working with my Jesus on. Do you understand? But we've got to get our expectation a tad bit higher. We got to get a little bit more excited. Does that mean you got to be like me? No, you're like you. You be like you. I be like me. We be you. You be me. I be us. Let's work together. You, are you with me? Amen. But you see that. That's a small thing right there. That doesn't seem small to me. So I'm preaching this to these students. And I said, listen, I'm filling up at least one continent while I'm here. Because I've already been doing this almost 20 years. I was like 10 years old when I started. No, I'm kidding. I'm playing. I'm playing. Totally playing. Because then that would be lying and I can't lie. So we're going to read a little bit and then we're going to finish the service. But I'm just going to read you this because I want you to see into another story a little bit, bit more depth. So he was not a farmer. He was not a fig farmer. He was not a fig tree farmer. I don't think he groomed trees. My understanding, he was a carpenter. That's my understanding. Anybody else? He, he wasn't a horse trainer. He wasn't a horse whisperer. But he did okay with that colt. But it says, um, and seen for a fig tree far, having far off, verse 13, he went to see if perhaps he could find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. Well, why didn't he just go, hey, oh my gosh, Father. You know, he could have been talking to the Lord. Father, I missed it. No figs, sorry. But in response, you know, Jesus used to speak to things. In response, he answered. It says in another translation, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Well, how could he do that? I mean, you know it was created through you, the Bible says. Just, can you just give it a break? But he didn't. So did he do this by accident? Did he ride that donkey by accident? Did he do that so you could, you could expect miracles in your day-to-day -day things? And he said, and his di disciples heard it. Then he comes, he cleanses the temple. And then verse 20, now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter remembering. You know the powerful thing when you get to the east? Not so much here, because we're independent. Is that whoever you follow, especially a rabbi, you got to do what he did. Remember Elijah? Elijah? Elisha knew, oh my gosh, look at the prophet I'm following. I'm going to get to do some awesome stuff. If you were hanging around an intellectual, you would be very intellectual. But if you're hanging around someone with signs and wonders, you are going to get to do signs and wonders. So these disciples, everything that's going on, they're paying attention. In the East, they know it's a little bit different. You need to, you need to check out what I'm sitting under my pastor. My pastor is blessed. My pastor knows things about God that I don't know. Do I want to receive them from? Well, you don't understand. His skin color is a tad bit different than me. He probably was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He, he wears nicer shoes than I do. No, 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 no. You with me? Who you sit under, you're going to receive if you decide to do that. But are you going to decide to do it? These guys did. And Peter, remembering, said, and I'm going to read this through quickly. He said to him, Rabbi, look, teacher, because I'm learning. The fig tree which you curse has withered away. And Jesus goes, yeah, yeah me. I'm just, I do stuff like that. <laughs> you know, hey, let's wrap my coat around me. And, and you know, that's what today's world would say. I like this one a little bit better. Could you see that? Yeah, baby. I'm just a rock star. You guys want to follow? Yeah. Hey, what's, come on guys. Yeah. You saw the tree. No, he doesn't do that. He goes, I think everything he did, he did for a reason. And watch what he does. He says, answered again. He didn't just say, guys, listen, that's like, that's a little bit beyond you. Remember, I'm the son of God, and this is not going to be part of your life, but you're going to remember that in the days as you get older, you're like, oh, we walk with Jesus. He was awesome. He was so cool. Man, it was awesome. I remember the day, that day we're walking. And the, you know, are you with me? You get my point. No, he had a real reason for this. And he said, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. 
This is not by accident that I demonstrated. I was a windsurf instructor, a ski instructor. I lived in the south of France and drove a boat. And I drove uh, Prince Andrea and hung out at a distance from Princess Stephanie. I drove baronesses around water skiing. I was a teacher. Now, if you're teaching people and they're not learning, you're not a teacher, you're just an escort. And I don't mean that in the wrong way. You with me? I was a ski instructor in Sun Valley, um, Idaho. I was a windsurf instructor in Hawaii. If you're going with me and I show you something and I demonstrate, and I go, you're probably never going to attain to my level. I mean, look at me. That, nobody would want that. So we know that rabbi, which means teacher, he was teaching them something. And he said, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. For assuredly, I say unto you now that Greek word is lego, systematic set discourse. He says, so he's told them before this kind of stuff. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever, who's a whoever? I'm a whoever. You a whoever? You a whoever? I'm a whoever. We're all whoever's. He didn't say only the special ones could do this or it's just me. He said, whoever, I'm a whoever. All of us is whoever's. Many of us can be whoever's. Whoever, who's a whoever? We are, commands or epo, says to this mountain, what's a mountain? The biggest thing in your life. Now we don't, why didn't he say to them, if, you know, if you go to, to uh, geology, ge geological school and you learn how to study the taking down of that, and if you wait another 2,000 years until Laterno invents the earth moving equipment, and then if you set down a group of people and you fundraise, and then we have a plan of where we're going to put this mountain, and then we move the mountain, and then when we move the mountain, we're going to see what we're going to set up and build there. No, he says if you just say to the biggest problem in your life, if you speak to that thing that is so big that every day you wake up, you look in that mirror and you say, oh my gosh, God, why did I get this burden? He says, if you say to this mountain, you be removed. Amen. Well, I'm the only one who can do it, but I'm just going to let you in a little bit of my lifestyle so that you'll be able to tell your friends, I hung with the rock star. No, 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 no. He said, if you say to this mountain, what mountain? Your mountain. Be thou cast in the sea, I know what it says, and does not doubt, does not entertain inner doubts. Be removed and be cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, believes, that believes that those things he, legos, systematic discourse, will be done. He will have epo, command, what he says, whatever. So whoever, who's a whoever? All of us. What's a whatever? Anything you speak to. Now don't speak over people. Uh, one of our instructors, Doug Jones, said this. He said, listen, he says, the highest expression is faith that God uses toward things. The highest expression toward people is love. So don't speak on people, well, I, my husband will do such and such. No, 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 you just love your husband or your wife or your children. Surround them with faith and love. But things, that's your mountain. Issues in your personal life. You with me? Okay, well, let's move on because I'd like Pastor Bill to invite me back again. Therefore, I say to you, I Lego, he's saying systematic discourse, which he's taught this to them before. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. What's receive? Receive that you grasp a hold of. He says, and you will have them. You with me? I don't believe it was an accident, and I'm going to wind it down. I don't believe he was just like, listen, I just need to show you my, my omnis omnipresence. What's all powerful? Omnipotence. I think he was... He was teaching them how to operate to, to kingdom ways, in kingdom ways. And it was for all of us. Is it going to be easy? Nah, it's not easy. Was it easy when I was at Bible school to go downtown? I used to ask all these young people, hey, we're going down witnessing at 2.30 to 4.30. Nah, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm training for pulpit ministry. <laughs> well, I'm training for pulpit ministry too. But I'll tell you, the best is when you... When you tell somebody about my Jesus, about your Jesus, and their heart breaks. I've, I've, I've been in, on Burger King in Las Vegas, and I'm just driving through with my family, and the kid in front of me, skinny, gaunt, looks like a heroin addict with tattoos up and down, looks like he'd kill your grandma. And the Lord says, tell him about me. And he comes to the side door to give me my meal, and I look at him, I say, anybody ever tell you about Jesus? And he starts shaking. 
I've seen it happen. And I said, do you know any born-again Christians? He goes, my aunt is. I said, well, she's praying that somebody would be bold enough to open their mouth besides her. And he starts shaking. I mean, he looked like he could kill your grandma. <laughs> but if you can't talk to that man that you'll never see again, how are you going to talk to a king while you sit down with him and you get to discourse the Bible? And when you stand praying, what's the end there for? I always look, what's the end there? So when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. And your Father in heaven, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. I believe there's a clue in there. A lot of times we're having our personal issues with other people, and we wonder, we wonder, forgive the people. He's forgiven us so much. He's done so much for us. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give Pastor Bill... Real quick, he said, uh, this is how we do it. And then after that, is that are, we, are we done with time? And then after that, this is what I'm going to do. I don't believe the gift that he puts on the inside of me, the gifts of healing, work, and miracles operate in our life regularly. Pastor, Darryl, um, Pastor Darren Baldwin said there's only two people he's had notable miracles in Live Oak, Florida. One, I preach on souls, call people up for soul winning. And when we call them up, one lady came up in a walker. I said, what are you here for? She goes, I need my leg healed. I prayed for her. She stood there. I came back down. I didn't call her up for healing. And I said, ma'am, did you sense a power of God go into your life? She said, yes, I did. And I said, well, do something. She went, whoa, whoa, my leg's healed. I mean, I'm, I'm like almost like perfectly designed for this, aren't I? And so then she put her walker away. And I saw her just standing over talking. They said, eight months. Go look at um, Melody Christian Center. There is a testimony on the website right now. She has still been healed since then. But she was a baby believer. I've seen thing after thing. But I will tell you this. I watch when the gift operates is when you bring the lost. Tell him. Just tell him. Some crazy California guy. He's traveled all over the world. He screams sometimes. He jumps up. Just tell him anything. Just get him here. Bring the sick. Jesus does it. I'm just the guy. I break glasses. Tell him I broke a glass this morning. It was awesome. <laughs> I mean, just tell him anything. Tell him whatever you want. Just say, you got to come tonight. It's going to be awesome. I mean, you will have a night. You, it's, you, are you with me? So that, that, that but this is what I'm going to do. It's because we've talked about these things. After Pastor Bill does his part right here, then if you need healing in your body, and you are ready to receive. How do you receive it? I actually have it on my phone right now. You receive, you grasp with both hands. If you're only going to come up here and grasp with one hand, well, let me just see what happened. Don't come right yet. You with me? Because tonight I know what we're supposed to talk about. Don't come right yet. But if you're ready to grasp with both hands and say, yes, I'm telling you the healing anointing goes through our body. I'm just a guy, but I'm aware of it. You come skiing with me, I can take you to a certain level of skiing that I know I have ability to go in. I just know how he operates through me. I'm just a guy. Sometimes I break glasses in pulpits. I just had my, my ministry card confiscated at an Air Force base in a dangerous country, and I have to go to my leaders and say, I need a couple of extra of those. You with me? But I want to challenge you. Bring the lost. Bring a crazy name. Bring the toughest lost. I'm telling you, we see the toughest kids come to Jesus. It's not me. Maybe I'm stupid enough, bold enough, whatever you want to say. Put it in any category. I don't care. Just get me the lost. Amen? So I'm going to turn it over. And then after that, you are ready to receive. And you're ready to, to receive your healing. We're going to lay hands on you. I'm telling you, he's going to demonstrate. He will. I'm just a guy. I'm just the broken glass. I'm not going to drink out of that water cup now. But I'm just the broken glass, so I'm just telling you that. Oh, I, did we give all, all this back? Did you guys count that to make sure I got it all back? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm totally if you If there's any left there, you can have it. You're gonna, you can only spend it over there. <laughs> Amen?